remember there were crazes so that when it was a while everybody played marbles. And I remember once a year the these Filipino guys would come and do a demonstration at the elementary school. I remember this at Sheridan Street School with yo-yos. And everybody had to go out and buy a yo-yo. And they organized contests and stuff like that. And some guys got really good at it. They could go uh, walk the dog and all these other tricks with yo-yos and stuff like that. And you played marbles, you do it for keeps or not for keeps, as it were. And when I got about junior high age, uh, bubblegum cards. There were the sports ones, but there were also others. The Korean War was on, so they had several bubblegum card series with soldiers on them, Marines. And then Hopalong Cassidy was very, very popular. And there was a series of bubblegum cards on Hopalong Cassidy where they took scenes from the old Hopalong Cassidy movies and put them on the cards. So there were like two dozen cards, and you had the whole movie plot. And we got very good at those. And, of course, one of the great regrets of life is, why didn't we keep them? And why didn't we keep them in great condition? Because on eBay now, you know, <laughs> you make a lot of money with that. It, that was, those were fun to have. So those were a lot of fun to do. After school, you'd play cards, you know. And if it landed face up, you win. If it landed face down, the other guy didn't. Oh, you know, yeah. Kids figure out how to do that stuff without anybody really teaching them how it came natural. You make your own fun. Yeah, we had our own rules. What schools did you attend? The first school I attended was Sheridan Street School. And then when we moved to the Wabash Avenue area, I went to Evergreen for fifth and sixth grade. And then I went to Hollabick Junior High and then Roosevelt High. So, Tell me about your schools. Well, sh they're all still there. Yeah. Uh, somewhat changed. Um, this last summer, I went down into that area that wanted for the specific purpose of taking pictures of buildings. And Sheridan Street School has been enlarged because the population there has grown. And it looks sort of pretty much the same. I didn't go inside. And the same for Evergreen. Evergreen's kind of enlarged. And as far as Hollowick Junior High is concerned, uh, not only did I go there as a student, but when I began teaching, I went back there and I taught there for six years. And Roosevelt has been very much changed, again, because uh, when I went to Roosevelt, the population was going down in numbers, and now it's one of the largest high schools. It's got like 4,000 and some insane number of students there. So there were some changes in architecture. But at the same time, I don't think they were necessarily changes for the better, especially Hollenbeck Junior High School, which was badly hit by the Long Beach earthquake of 1933. And when they came around to rebuild it, they tore down most of the old school and got Richard Neutra, who was a very prominent architect, to design the buildings. And he did a really outstanding job. Just a, marvelous place to work in. Uh, you didn't need air conditioning uh, and you had control of your own environment. They had those radiators that went along the wall so if it was a cold day you had control in your classroom. You didn't have to depend on some central thermostat that probably wasn't going to work very well anyway. Uh, you could do it in your own room and it had wonderful windows. Uh, so in your last class of the day, you had to have somebody who's a window monitor. And this is the kid who got the big sticks that he could move the window up and down. And uh, it was a very uh, comfortable environment for, for classrooms. Uh, I've been in classrooms ever since, and I don't think they were anywhere near as good as what Neutra designed. But in the 1960s, when the school's population was growing, they had to add some buildings. And the buildings they added basically looked like giant shoe boxes with exterior stairwells made out of metal. And when the students would go up and down, boy, you could hear it, you know. And they just sort of plopped them into an empty space on the school. And the Unified was doing that in the 60s and 70s and 80s for all I know. Well, now, of course, they're, hopefully they're designing better schools now with, with the new high schools going in. But uh, uh, they did have some really good designs, and, uh, and they were interesting places both as a student and coming back as a teacher. What were your favorite subjects in school? Somehow I liked history. Uh, 
I like to read. Uh, I, I got bit by a bug at a real early age about reading. Uh, there was an episode where uh, I don't think the place has been. Well, the ancestor of Kmart was a place called Cress. And they had a department store downtown, I think on Broadway somewhere. And it didn't have the same glamour as the Broadway or May Company or anything like that. It was, I guess it was sort of like, well, like I say, it's the ancestor, I think, of, of Kmart. But my mother went in there one time, and I probably was about nine years old or ten years old at the time. And they were selling books there, and it, like literally at a big bin. Uh, for children, not exactly children's books, classic stuff that's supposed to be for children to read at 25 cents a copy. And she, she brought about four of them home, spent the dollar. Then she found out that they were reducing it to 10 cents a copy, brought me along and to help carry. And we just, that was my first, it was my beginnings of a library. And I read every one of those things. And they were, there was no compromise. I look back on it now and I say, wow, you know, uh, this isn't C Spot Run. These these were uh, little uh, little men. I didn't read Little Women, but I read the sequel Little Men, and uh, Pinocchio by uh, Claudi. Now that was a real book. That was like three hundred pages. I didn't know any different. It was an interesting story, and and, and not the same as Walt Disney's Pinocchio, you know. And uh, and so uh, this was the core of my reading, and when I really got going on. Uh, what got me excited about history was because uh, I was a bad boy. I had committed some sort of infraction uh, at Roosevelt when I was in the 11th grade, and I was sent to sit outside the assistant principal's office. And I had my books with me, and he couldn't see me right away. He was busy punishing somebody else. And I sat there for two periods, and I said, well, I might as well read. And so I took the U.S. history book that we were using in the class, and I made a remarkable discovery, namely, you don't have to read one chapter a week. Like the way the school expects you to do it, you could sit there and read 50, 60, 70 pages, which is what I did, and I never, I never, I never looked back. So I was a bad boy, and that's what got me into history, and I guess some people still think I'm a bad boy in history. What, what was the infraction, do you recall? Who remembers? I probably said something, or talked back, or... Whatever it was, uh, whatever it was, was nothing like what you you don't even get sent down for today. Let me put it to you that way. I remember uh, when I started teaching, and I think I even did it for a semester or two until I realized how ridiculous it was that if you caught a kid chewing gum, you put a little G in his roll book like it was the world's worst sin, <laughs> you know. And uh, now you look at that, and say, my God, you know, here they are bringing guns to school and, and doing all kinds of, there's a fighting going on at the lunchtime, and this goes down in the junior high, and I, I just, you look at that and say, and, and they were worried about chewing gum. But then I had my revenge, because uh, I, in doing some of the research I enjoyed doing, I ran across an article in the Los Angeles Examiner in 1912 uh, about how the schools were trying to do something about gum chewing. So even, you know, this is almost a hundred years ago, <laughs> and they're worried about gum chewing back then, but they, they even had a special department of health in, in the LA Unified, because they thought gum chewing was somehow bad for you. It would rot your teeth out or whatever it was. And then there was the opposite side who would argue, well, it promotes digestion. <laughs> Yeah, schools can get some of some of the people in in uh, administrative offices really have too little to do. You know, they they have to invent things. I ran into that.